Oh my God, guys, it's been a really long winter, hasn't it? And it's still winter right now, but I have one clear night and I'm making sure that I am not missing it. So here I am packing everything up, making sure that I got everything. It's actually nine o'clock in the morning, guys. I just don't wanna forget anything tonight. And I'd really like to shoot with my new gear that I got, but Tonight's just not the night to experiment, if you know what I'm saying. So I think we're gonna shoot with the ZWO AM5 and also the Askar 103. And we're gonna go after something in Orion tonight. Orion is in a really nice spot. It's high up in the sky. It's in the south. The only thing is it sets in the west and that's where Seattle's light pollution is. So I need to be somewhere where I can track it all night and avoid the light pollution. And I think I know just the spot but it's a little sketch if you know what I'm saying, but we're gonna try it anyways. Right, first clear night of the year. Not really sure how long I have though. Cleared up just temporarily, but check this out. Look at Orion's just right over my shoulder over here. <laughs> Getting some boogeyman nebula. And I'm kind of gorilla astering up. This is actually the road here. I'm in some random parking lot <laughs> right now. <laughs> Boogeyman Nebula is super faint, by the way. I'm not even sure I'm getting it right now. That's how faint it is. I can see the like faint outline of it and the dust that it's in, but it is super faint, super. If you're anything like me guys, you have also been waiting for a night like last night. And I have been waiting for nearly two months, right? But I can't really complain. I've, I've had a really good fall astro season and my fall astro season actually started at the end of summer. I actually started shooting into Orion when I noticed it in the sky at about 2 a.m. It was funny, this one night I just foregone, forgoed, is it forgo? I don't know. I ignored, <laughs> I ignored all the summer targets I could have gotten, right? And I went for Orion because last year, I didn't even get to shoot into it because of winter lockout. Plus I got sick and I missed it completely until spring. So I got the Horsehead and Flame Nebula then and that actually stands out in my mind a lot because that was the night I got surrounded by coyotes. All right, do you hear that? There's like a million coyotes out here with me right now. Like I'm actually surrounded right now. Uh... There's a pack here, pack there, and then a pack over here.
If I get eaten. <laughs> you heard it here first, okay? <laughs> if I get eaten, you know what I mean, tonight. <laughs> it was freaky. Yeah, it was kind of a scary night too, and do you hear that? That's actually Taco. He, I set up all this stuff and he just crawled up on the couch and just started sleeping. So if you hear him snoring, I'm sorry. <laughs> I also got the annular eclipse and I actually forgot that it was going on at that point in time. And I actually got it from right over there. Annular solar eclipse day. We're getting it too. Look at this. Isn't that cool? I got a 10 stop neutral density on here, so. Getting some cool video. And it's an old DSLR, so if I destroy it, well, whatever. <laughs> I also got numerous targets. I got the Pleiades. I also got the Tadpoles Nebula, which was part of my Ascar series. I also got the California Nebula. Uh, probably the most highest resolution, the most, the highest resolution photo of the Rosette Nebula that I have taken so far, and the Great Orion Nebula. It's the second time I've only shot it, and it looks pretty cool. I can't wait to add a little bit more exposure time. And tonight, I got my first standalone dark nebula, LDN 1622, or what's called the Boogeyman Nebula. Actually, is that right? 1622? Let me see. <laughs> I just want to make sure that's right. Yep, LDN 1622. <laughs> and I think dark nebula are really interesting. You know, they are cold spots in space, right? And they're only visible because of the gas that's around them that are excited by other forces or starlight that's kind of filtering into where they're at and they're either backlit or it's just highlighted by the starlight itself. And looking at the Boogeyman Nebula, I could see why it's called that. It's kind of creepy, right? And honestly, I wasn't sure I was getting it either because my first sub exposure, when it returned, I barely got any signal in there whatsoever. I mean, I could kind of see it, but that's when I decided I was just gonna get as much exposure time in HA as possible, right? And I'm glad I did. Two hours of stacking and I actually got the nebula. I not only got the nebula, but there's this faint glow from Bernard's loop. You can kind of see it in the right-hand side of the frame. And also there's this star right above the Boogeyman Nebula that kind of backlights it too. It's actually really beautiful and I can't wait to finish this photo or just get enough exposure time to turn it into a color scene. And I think I could get away with two more hours in S2 and then maybe two more hours in 03, but that's only if the weather provides me with that. So hopefully it does, and I promise I'll take you guys on that adventure as well. But I guess for now, enjoy my photo of the Boogeyman Nebula. Well guys, that's all I had for you today. Thanks for coming along on this little adventure and we'll definitely have more to come. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>